All right, good morning. It is the 17th of March, 2023. I have been informed that today is St. Patrick's Day. I am not able to go out and shoot and do my video outside because it is windy this morning. So we're here in the greenhouse where it is not windy and it's not nearly as cold. I usually start my videos with a little archery practice and then I talk about my favorite subject which is Yeshua the Messiah also known as Jesus Christ. I'm just going to hold my bow just out of habit to have a prop. The subject that I'd like to talk to this morning that has consumed my mind for several days is exactly who is Yeshua Jesus. Really, that is the essential question that arises when you are considering what you must believe. There is one group, I'll divide it into three. There's one group that says he's nobody, didn't even exist. There's another group in religion that says that he was a man, a great man that God gave power to so that he could save people, work miracles, raise people from the dead. And then there is another group which I would say is the majority of believers that he was actually God himself. This whole thing is, is based on a belief system. None of these questions can be answered with certainty. That's the way it is. That's the way God made it. That's the way it came down to us. I'm that's the way it is. You have to live with it. I have to live with it. I will say, yes, I'm one of those that leans strongly towards that He is somehow God Himself. But I do recognize that there are problems with that. There are pros that suggest, yes, He's God. And there are other things that say, well, I don't know, you know, how could a man be God? But I'm going to try to be, to narrow it down to just one of those points of discussion. Alright, in the ancient Israel religion that was brought down through the teachings of Moses, an institution of sacrifice was codified in the Bible where once a year they were to uh, sacrifice a lamb without blemish. The very best lamb that they could find. It had no scars on it. It was perfect. And that that sacrifice was to somehow set people right with God. The shedding of that blood. Well, it was understood, and I'm pretty sure that, that this is correct, that that sacrifice was a forerunner of the promised sacrifice that would be done later by the real Lamb of God. This also can't be proven. None of this can be proven. It's a belief system. 
if it was provable, then there would be no need for me to talk about it. The lamb without blemish is asserted by the Christians that was Jesus Christ. That when he was crucified, he became the lamb without blemish that shed his blood so that we might be saved from our sin, which we have all committed. Now I'm going to go to the, the story of the rich young ruler. I don't, I'm not going to say where it is, but you just put it in your search, in, in, in the rich young ruler. Now the this, it's a story, it's not a parable. This meeting with the rich young ruler would have been an actual event. So Jesus, Yeshua, is walking around doing his thing, healing the sick, raising the dead, and teaching the people. And a rich young ruler walked up to him and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? I'm going to, that's just the very first thing he said. And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? There's none good but God. He answered the question with a question. But then he went on to explain some other things. Okay, well we're just going to stop right there. Why do you call me good? There's none good but God. So, uh, the people that want to say Jesus wasn't God use that to justify He said there's none good but God. That he meant and I'm not good. But he didn't say, there's none good but God, and I'm not good. He just said, there's none. Why do you call me good? There's none good but God. Now, another way to look at that is he was saying, are you calling me good? Are you calling me God? You can't know which one Jesus was meaning. And he did that on purpose. There's none good but God. Alright, here's the thing, the argument that keeps coming up over and over. And I didn't make this argument up myself. It was other people. Many people have, made, have understood this. If Jesus was saying that He wasn't good, then... What business do we have expecting Him to give us eternal life and salvation? Because I'll ask you this, if you're not good, what are you? Well, you're not good, you're bad. That's all there is to it. So if Jesus was saying, I'm not good, only God is good, then he was saying that he was bad. Now, then the ancient ritual of the, of the uh, sacrificing of the lamb, they were to get a lamb without blemish. Now, if Jesus then was sacrificed for us and he was bad, then that made him a lamb that was blemished. His sacrifice would be just of a, a flawed human being. So, if he was a flawed human being, then that would insinuate to us that, well, what are we worshiping him for? If he was bad, what kind of a sacrifice for our sin is that? Well, we're bad too. It's one bad thing trying to save another bad thing, which doesn't make any sense. 
All right. So that's what I want you to think about. Did Jesus mean when He said, why do you call Me good? There's none good but God? Was He saying, I am good and I am God? Or was He saying, I'm bad? That's one way to look at this little interaction. If Jesus was not good, then why are we following Him? We're just following another flawed man. Why am I sitting here spending my time talking about Him, saying that I'm a follower of Yeshua the Messiah, following His instructions to declare His name before men, why am I doing that? And it's not just that I'm spending my time here in the greenhouse this morning. This consumes my mind all day long and all night when I'm not sleeping and sometimes while I am sleeping in the form of dreams. It is what I think about all the time. And I'm not complaining about it. I don't find anything else worth thinking about myself. I do believe that he was saying, yes, I'm God. Now, I will tell you, I was going to try to just focus on that one thing. And by the way, that parable of the rich young ruler has more to it than that. That was just the opening salvo between Jesus and the rich young ruler. Why do you call me good? There's none good but God. But I will say one other thing that Jesus said that leads me to believe that he was calling, he was saying, I am God. When he was in an argument with the religious authorities, he made the statement, before Abraham was, I am. He was saying he existed before Abraham. Well, if Yeshua was just a mere man, although universally accepted as a great moral teacher, he's still just a man, and he was a flawed man, because all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He said before Abraham was born, I am. Well, Abraham was, I guess, a thousand years before Jesus was born. Now, if Jesus was born as a man, it was impossible for him to have been before Abraham. And he said, before Abraham was, I am. And I am was well understood by the Jews to be the sacred name of Yahweh, God Himself. I am. Some of the translations say that it meant I am that I am. My own personal favorite is that I am Yahweh means I exist eternally. I am the only thing that exists. I am. Alright, so yes, I believe Jesus was God. I can't prove it and I have to be satisfied with that. I can't prove it because he didn't make it where we could prove it. He didn't want that. He wanted us to believe. Look at the evidence and believe. One other thing that makes me believe, I'll go ahead and go with another one, was no man ever spoke like that. Now, I haven't examined the writings and the speakings of every person but that's ever been around, but I have had a pretty good idea 
looking and studying in the history of how people talk. And I will agree, no man ever spoke like that. There was something totally different about what he was saying and what he, the things that he said. Now I'll tell you one more little quick story that helps me with that. He was, Yeshua was speaking in the temple, preaching. Well, the religious authorities, which taught that you must keep the law, uh, they had rituals and all kind of things. You have to keep the Sabbath. You've got to do this. You've got to do that to be saved. Well, Jesus' idea was totally different. It's not about keeping because we can't keep it. In other words, if you can't keep the entire law perfectly, then you haven't kept it. But they were ready to kill him. He was becoming more and more popular. He had raised his friend Lazarus from the dead recently. And the people, it was word was getting out, hey, this guy is something else. This is the Messiah, the King of Israel. He's come to take over. And he could have, but the people, but the religious leaders hated him. Well, they sent the temple police, the guard, at this time, Go arrest this guy and drag him in here. We've got to get him out of here. He's making the people believe in him and not in us. So they sent this temple police or guard out there. Go out there and grab him and drag him in here and we're going to arrest him and do away with him. So a little while later, the temple guard, they didn't show up with him so the Religious authorities said, well, go out there and find out why the guards didn't arrest him. And they made the guards come back in there. They said, why didn't you arrest this man like we told you to do? And their answer was, no man ever spoke like this. They were mesmerized. They could not do their duty. That They were under the authority of these temple priests. Well, you know, in the military... When you're sent out there to do something, you better be doing it or you better be having a good reason why you didn't do it. And to tell them no man ever spoke like this before, well, and as far as the religious leaders were concerned, that was no, no good reason. And so that is another reason that I believe that Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, was God. Now some people say, how, how can there be... That means that Yeshua and Yahweh make two gods instead of one God. Well, let me tell you something. God, in my opinion, can do anything He wants. God is omniscient. He can do anything. And if God wanted to make Himself into a man and send Him to Earth and send Himself to Earth, or there are other ways of looking at it, that God somehow or another in the in the Old Testament it says our God is one. And that was the sticking point. You know, our God is one. But God is God. He can make Himself one and many if He wants to. He can do it in such a way that we can't understand and that trips us up. My opinion is that all this was done to see to weed out the people that couldn't look at Jesus and what he did and say, yeah, that's this guy can give us eternal life. This guy's gone. We see it now. And then others say, we can't see it. We just can't see it. Well, those are the ones that don't believe. Well, those religious leaders did not see it, and they said, okay, we're going to kill this guy. And they did. 
thus making Jesus the sacrificial lamb without blemish. They had no idea what they were doing. They were actually doing what was predicted in the Bible without even realizing it. It is said that no one can see God unless God opens your eyes. That's another little thing that adds into it. This is a very difficult to understand. I'll say impossible to understand thing. And what it boils down to is, because I just watched a video where people were saying Jesus is not God, He's just a man. Does that mean I'm going to quit believing that He was God? No, nope, no way. I believe He was. I also tell you right now, I cannot understand the mechanisms of it. Well, I'll tell you something else. I can't understand the mechanisms of the entire creation. We used to get lobsters when we lived up in Massachusetts and have wonderful lobster dinners. I don't understand a lobster. I don't know how it was made. I don't know how it works. But it didn't keep me from eating it. And Yeshua said, I am the bread of life. If you eat this bread, you will have eternal life. Well, just because I don't know, I didn't know how a lobster worked. I didn't know what it was exactly. It was a funny looking thing. I still ate it. Well, I don't understand about Yeshua Jesus either. Exactly all of the details, nor was I meant to. But I'm still eating of that bread. And I am believing what he said and I'm trusting in him I don't know anything else there's no other no other person no man ever spoke like that before he spoke I read it in the Bible and I said no man ever spoke like that he said believe in me and I will give you eternal life I will give you water that when you drink it, you will never thirst. He said, follow me. He didn't say, follow me, only if you understand everything and how it works. He didn't say anything. He said, follow me, even though you can't understand it. And I see this man in my mind's eye, and I hear what he said, and he said, follow me, I'm hearing other follow me's. I'm hearing scientists say follow me. Other religions saying follow me. And I'll show you where it is. Other philosophies saying follow me. There's a lot of follow me's out there. I'm hearing witchcraft people saying, no, follow me. We'll do satanic rituals. This is where it's at. I'm hearing all of those guys but I'm following, I'm not, I hear Jesus saying follow me and I say, I believe this is the guy I'm going to follow. These are the choices that we have in life and I'm following him. And even though I cannot explain it exactly, and nobody can by the way, I will tell you one little story. I cannot tell you who the man was that said this but he was one of the most and some of y'all will know the man's name and I apologize for not knowing but one of the most educated scholars in Christianity I'm quite sure he's deceased now he had doctorates in everything Hebrew Greek uh, every way you could be educated in the Christian religion well thought of and he was asked near the end of his life with all of your education what can you tell me is the most profound thing that you've learned in all of your many um, classes and education that you've had and he said this Jesus loves me, this I know, 
for the Bible tells me so. And this shocked the people that asked him. But that's what it boiled down to. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. All right, this is Gardner Israel. Once again, telling you exactly what's coming out of my heart and out of my mouth. I hope I get to talk to you again. Signing off.